Um, and, and, and so the question of what can we do to have more eggs really comes down to number one, understanding uh, what the quality of the eggs is that we retrieve after stimulation. Uh, and if we can understand why it is that some eggs go on to become beautiful looking embryos and further go on to produce a, a successful pregnancy, is there something that we can do uh, for some of the other eggs that don't seem to have the luxury of the planning into the uterus? So since, yeah. we are, since we are talking to the late public, um, a natural cycle produces only one egg, right. and what we do in infertility treatments, always infertility drugs, is we produce more eggs. And those eggs are, if we hadn't given them the fertility drugs, they would have died and disappeared. Mm -hmm. uh, only one egg would have survived. So, consequently, that egg is probably chosen by nature, right? That's what we think. There is a natural process of selection, if you will, that among the many potential eggs that could have come out of the ovary, only one actually makes it. And so, the theoretically, at least, that would be the price paper, the, the, the best egg, right? That would be the best egg if, if only we knew how to turn all of the potential eggs into the prize winner. Okay. All right. So, we are ending up through fertility drugs now with many eggs. Uh, what can we do to make them as good as possible so that we get as many good embryos as possible because eggs dominate the quality of the embryos. Right, right. Well, I think, uh, you know, this is maybe one of the places where I think the research you've been doing here has really tried to take a step back and say, what is it especially in, in women of advanced maternal age, what is it that's changed? Uh, we can still use the fertility drugs and maybe collect more eggs, but we know that as a woman ages, uh, even though we get those eggs, they don't seem to be quite the same. So I think there are two strategies that both you as a clinician and me as a basic scientist need to be thinking of for the future. Uh, the first is, what is it that we could do to address the basic function of the ovary as it ages? Are there things that we could be giving to our patients that would restore sort of a more youthful environment for like, those eggs to develop? Like we do with androgens. This is exactly the spirit of uh, using the androgens that you have promoted with your patients and is, is bearing good results at the end of the day. I would say at the other end uh, is, uh, you know, are there things after we get those eggs out, are there things that we could possibly do to them to, in a way, enhance their ability to produce a good embryo and to, you know, really produce a stable pregnancy? Isn't that already too late? It's not too late because one of the things we've learned, especially since women of older and older ages come to clinics like yours and others, is when we, when we take the eggs out, not all of them are quite ready to be fertilized. Some of them have, they lack some of the maturity that's needed. And so there's been a, a, a very serious attempt recently to mature them, to mature them after we take them out of the yeah, we, and I and I and I think there's some promise there for the future. Yeah, we do pretty well with so-called M1 eggs, which mm -hmm. are the kind of intermediate eggs between mature and very immature. Mm -hmm. I think with those we have been doing quite surprisingly well. I would say yes, each other, but we still have pretty big problems with the very immature, the so-called chili. Right, right. And there are, there are, of course, people who are, you know, even trying to consider who could we ever be able to pick a stem cell 
and turn it into one of these things. And that's way off in the future, but I think the short range goal is exactly what you're saying. If we retrieve them and they're not ready, what can we do before we fertilize them? It might increase chances of 